today on Mastering Music with Matthew. Copyright. We're going to be discussing public domain. So, in just a minute or two, I have special guest Marina down below me is going to be giving her presentation and telling you about what happened. She has a YouTube channel called The Piano Keys, and she's going to tell you her story. Joining me also, I have Jennifer Valaket. Jennifer is the music teacher who plays saxophone and flute. And finally, last but not least, we have Evelyn. Evelyn Holland, musician, singer, and the guitarist marina please tell your story hi matthew i love your tone it's like one of those wrestling matches i feel like we should have all worn our wrestling outfits with like hair and stuff i feel really underdressed now <laughs> on my channel i do a lot of classical music tutorials but i also do pop you know because that's i'm a professional musician so i do a whole bunch of things and when i have pop music videos, you know, like recently I did Once Upon a December, right, from the movie Anastasia. When I get those copyright notices, I'm totally cool. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a musician, I get it. Now, <laughs> when I post something that has been written more than 200 years ago, and I get a copyright notice, usually what happens is that the AI is recognizing my performance as somebody else's performance. So the performance is, and I'm not a copyright lawyer, but you can't use somebody else's performance without compensating them. Fine, no problem. But these are all my performances. Like it's me literally playing the piano and you can see me on the video, right? Mm -hmm. So usually if I get a notice on one of those, I dispute it. And within a few days, it comes back cleared because I didn't use anybody else's recording. What better way to show you how to play it than to actually play it? So, so I played part of Moonlight Sonata on this recording and immediately got a copyright notice, like even before it went, it went live, right? Uh, this is a new thing that YouTube is doing. They scan your video before you publish it. I got a copyright notice and I was like, it's fine, no problem. This has happened before. I disputed it. Weeks go by. Almost four weeks go by and I get an email saying like there has been a resolution and I don't even look at it because I'm thinking, yeah, of course there was a resolution. It's Moonlight Sonata. Mm -hmm. So I log into my studio and the copyright notice is still there. So all of a sudden my spider senses are up like something's wrong here. So I go through and it says that my appeal has or not my appeal, my um, the dispute was rejected. So I'm like, how do you reject a Moonlight Sonata copyright dispute? This is like a bizarro world, right? So I investigate further. It turns out that we think it's called Moonlight Sonata, but some artist thinks that they wrote it and it's called Wicca Moonlight. So I, on my video, I showed basically what was available to me. None of the options available spoke to my issue, right? So I could get rid of that clip, like I could cut it out. Can't do that, because that's basically what the video's about. I could mute it. Okay, and then how am I going to demonstrate if it's muted? Or um, I could, if I go ahead and accept monetization, I'm basically acknowledging that this is a uh, cover of somebody else's copyrighted work. And to my sense of justice, that's not okay. No. And I just, I just know that if Beethoven were alive today, of everything I know about him, he would have called BS on that in a second, and he would not stand for it. So I, I don't want to like make myself bigger than I am, but I was like, no, Beethoven deserves representation. It's not even about the money of monetization, right? Mm -hmm. Because that the entities which were a bunch of like string of, of letters, uh, turns out there are some kind of like rights organizations or whatever. So they can put, uh, they can put advertisements on my video of me playing a public domain piece and they can get money off of it. Mm -hmm. And this, this like set me off because I'm sure you've had the experience of having something really bad happen with a corporation and you try to call and talk to a human being and you can't. So it's basically like you against the monster that cannot be named or seen. Right. So, so my sense of justice and like just my like frustration about the state of the world today <laughs> took over. I was walking and I came home like, no, I'm going to make a video about this because I think I'm probably leaving YouTube. And I just want to tell my subscribers the ones that watch like all my videos and comment, 
why I might not be posting anymore, right? So this video went viral because it was shared on Reddit and it ended up on the front page of Reddit. I contacted a copyright lawyer and I had a, a chat with him and he told me, yeah, you can take it to court, but basically after 30 days, you don't really have much of a chance of, you know, following through. And it had been almost 30 days. So, which was kind of suspicious to me. And, and not only that, it doesn't prevent this from happening again and again. And then I read the Reddit uh, comments and the comments on my video. My video at this point has like 150,000 views or something like that. And it's only been up for like 10 days. So people really resonated with this issue. And it has happened to so many people. And disputing one and taking it to court, if I should choose to do that, doesn't really change the problem itself. So basically a waste of time. And uh, and then YouTube contacted me, a few people from YouTube contacted me. And then I had a half hour meeting with them on Zoom, kind of like this. And they explained my options and they told me that the copyright uh, notice had been removed from my video and they also showed me how to contact a human being at youtube so i made a final video showing people that so that if someone somebody else is having this issue they can try this avenue first and basically that's the story so to to recap um you make a video that's demonstrating Moonlight Sonata. It gets multiple copyright claims from all these uh, letter organizations. You say, hey, this ain't right. And YouTube says, yeah, it is. And then you have to go a step further. You, there was a copyright strike involved. Am I right? You didn't say that term. Not a strike. So okay, the, good. But if you pursue this mm -hmm. and it's decided against you, I'm glad you brought that up, Matthew. You're risking a strike. You're risking a strike. Yeah, and three strikes, you are out. Your channel is taken down. It has happened to people with millions of subscribers. So it's not like YouTube cares. It's just kind of, it's almost like there's no people involved in this. Like the AIs are playing with our lives. For a company to do Moonlight Sonata and have it be triggered by an instructional tutorial. I mean, this is absolutely intentional. I, I did forget to mention one thing. The YouTube uh, people that I spoke with, Moonlight Sonata pretty much sounds like Moonlight Sonata, no matter who plays it, you know, with slight variations. But, so there are mm -hmm. reference recordings that are in the system that get matched up. It's a reference recording. And so YouTube said that this Wicca Moonlight is no longer considered a good reference recording. It's been taken. I don't remember the exact verbiage. It's on my second video but it's been taken out of circulation as a reference recording. So technically or theoretically, it cannot be matched up again to any other recording of the light sonata. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, I just find that very strange considering it's like, yeah, it's like a reference. I'm honestly kind of baffled as to why that, why that was triggered. I, I honestly think these bots are just, uber annoying because it's like why moonlight sonata is so old too it's like there's so many different variations of it all over the place <laughs> and for yeah. it to trigger that that one particular thing like they're bots doing it but for something like moonlight sonata i mean come on people that's you know that's almost like and like like you said matthew it's like intentional because why why would they do that particular one that's crazy the, the bots the ai must be really really anal about yeah. what they perceive as a c copyright infringement um, mm -hmm. these days with certain artists and uh, Beethoven being uh, obviously a huge influence on many different types of music yeah. in this day and age. Because of Mickey Mouse, nothing will ever become public domain ever again. If it's not public domain, it never will be ever because of Mickey Mouse. Because every time Mickey Mouse nears expiration, they just extend it. It started out well, when Walt Disney dies. Oh, no, 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 no. He's dead. Oh, my God. He died so young. Okay, we'll give him 25 years. Oh, no, we'll give him 50 years. Oh, now we're giving him 100 years. It's like, what the hell? And so that literally means, you know, like nothing. The Beatles will never be public domain. Never, ever, because of these corporations. And then they have to go so far as to freaking start eating our classics. 
that are before that? I mean, the greed is just, it's just unfathomable to me. It makes me want to cry because I love music so much. And yeah, you can't like pay Beethoven, but you can at least pay him the respect. I mean, it's like something that I want to point out. John Williams, for example, love his music, love the composer. Um, my marching band tried getting the copyright. They were willing to pay for it. And he said, no, he said, you cannot march on field with my music. And we've, we've done it before because he gave us permission before. And he said, no, you cannot, nobody's allowed to. So my director said, so you're, you're telling me that you're going to allow, you know, obviously, you know, these high school bands are doing it without copyright. So we're trying to do it the right way. And you're saying no. And basically his answer was no. I was very disappointed because I was like, don't you want your music honored? Like, hello? Like, and I love John Williams. No offense if he listens to this. I love, I love him. I love his music. But that was just a very disappointing, you know, gesture from him. John Williams himself who said no or the people representing John Williams? As far as I know, the story is, my band director said it was John Williams. So maybe it was a little both, but I, I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll go back in our DMs because he DM'd me it. But like, I'm pretty sure he said it was John Williams. Go back to YouTube policy with the copyright. YouTube is basically trying to like play as hands off as possible. They're like, we don't really want to deal with this. And so, um, you know, one little uh, creator we don't care if they have 100 subscribers or 100 million subscribers. Um, one little creator, they don't matter. This big, giant company, uh, well, they matter. And so we're just going to make the creators ask for forgiveness rather than permission, right? You know, And, and that's really the way that, that these bots are approaching it. I think it's really cool that you got it resolved. And um, we're also able to share with people how to get a human on the other end because that's not easy if you don't know how to do it. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like, okay, so YouTube started out really cool, right? It was like people sharing from their homes things that they were doing. And then other people around the world were watching. And it was kind of a really interesting community, right? Do you remember when videos had to be like shorter than 10 minutes? And I so do. They would be split up into parts and stuff. Mm -hmm. I loved that because, because it was just like regular people talking to one another across the miles. And, uh, and then at some point it became a money-making machine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, recently I was involved in a project and, uh, and I happened to meet somebody who owns a company that makes YouTube videos for 10 different channels. So it's no longer, and they have like a, a team of people working around the clock, literally 12 hour days, turning out content just turning out content. And we know that there are 500 hours of video uploaded every day or every hour or something like that. Every minute. Wow. It's, wow. It's, it's something crazy, right? So it's become like this monster where you have to have, and this is on all social media, you have to have like strategies. You have to have a, a team. You have to have a company. You have to know SEO. It's not just like, hey, I do this cool thing. In my mind, I'm just wondering, like, where does it end? Where does, where do we stop? Like, I myself, I'm kind of like a YouTube junkie, you know? I, I watch lectures, I read, you know, audio books, things like that. I just really love, I, I don't even have a TV. But, you know, like, for example, I like the uh, philosopher Alan Watts. And there's hours and hours of content of him just speaking. I would have never mm -hmm. countered that if it weren't for YouTube. So YouTube is like this, like, two-headed monster right one is like amazing the other one's like we'll kill you or whatever yeah so yeah. i'm not fine i'm just wondering like what's the future in a way i wish i could travel forward about 10 years and look look at what's going on with our world you know yeah i me too and i i think um with the last year things have changed even more drastically and because uh, every a lot of people have been inside or just at home so there's a lot of content that's been created so i'm sure yeah. um, these corporations are thinking of new ways to put a uh take uh, take the reins or um min minimize uh other like individuals contributions yeah and to answer your question i i quickly looked in our dms and he did say it was john williams that actually 
turn it down himself. So Wow, that's crazy. It's crazy that he would even have the time to look at something so small and then reject it with no with no reason. That's yeah. So I'm guessing I'm guessing maybe his publishers or somebody went to him about it or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I well, don't know. On, for YouTube one of the reasons why the, the copyright policy is so wildly different across the spectrum is because each copyright holder slash copyright organization, right? Like, like if a company owns the rights, right? Each one gets to make their own policy because YouTube's taken this completely hands off, right? Ask for forgiveness approach. So then the companies basically get to just make whatever claims they want. Did you guys know whenever a video gets to a million views now, any video, it gets re-scrutinized for copyright and as little as three notes can get you a copyright claim once you wow. have a million views on a video. Jeez. As little That's... as three notes. I wonder if there's going to be an alternative to uh, YouTube coming up in the next or like next few years because... Yeah, there's definitely a, uh, a monopoly of sorts happening with YouTube in terms of like at least the, their amount of content and their control over the content. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And I, I just don't like that they have these bots doing it now because it's it's really they they're so pick, picky about everything. It's like, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying is no, I the, know. the bots like they could just make a claim. It yeah. could be it could be totally bogus and fraudulent. It could be something just made up, and then you have to prove that the claim is wrong. Mm -hmm. It should be the other way around. My dad wants me to do a cover of Gato Barbieri's uh, version of Europa on tenor saxophone, um, you know, Carlos Santana tune. And so yeah. I found a background track that I really want to use on YouTube, and I, I messaged them on the comments. It's like, hey, you know, do you mind if I do a cover with your track? And I waited like a month, and I never heard back from them. So what do I do? Do I just do it and just use the track and just credit him for it? You know what I mean? I'm not sure exactly what the proper thing to do is at this point because I, I reached out to them and asked them for permission and then they didn't respond. Well, some might say, okay, so then make your own music, create your own music. <laughs> and huh, <that's> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, it has happened. And I say this in my, I think, second video on the series that a person who made his own music and uploaded it and allowed other people to use it copyright free. Uh, some other company came in and said, oh, no, you can't use that music, even though it's yours. And then the people who use it in their videos, they can't use it either. Like, how does that even work? The problem is also that it's this is not a U.S centric thing we are now global right we don't play by the same rules basically so even if you make your own music you're not safe and as far as monopoly it is a monopoly people are saying oh no there's other options but there really aren't because of the reach of youtube and then it, all these big companies they just seem to like buy up any little company that seems like it could be a competitor so at this point i don't know yeah how there could be other avenues. I think that we, we pretty much all agree, you know, that, you know, we need to respect creators of today and we also need to respect creators of yesterday. Without money, we don't have power. We don't have a voice. And as artists, I'm True. really tired of working for free. People saying, oh, you have fun. Your job is so much fun. You know, why don't you do this for exposure, please? My channel is is mostly copyrighted stuff. My channel's reaction yeah. videos to copyrighted stuff. I do covers of copyrighted stuff. And I also do originals and also do lessons. 80% of what I'm doing at least is copyrighted material. So I expect the money to go out on that. I'm yeah. doing that as an advertisement for my channel. But yeah. that other 20%, yeah. that's sacred to me. And if you touch that, even remotely close to touch it, Oh man, you're gonna get on my bad side quick. <laughs> yeah. So tonight I'm releasing uh, my latest video, which is basically uh, a bunch of pop songs and pop rock songs that were based on classical pieces cool. that were pretty big hits. And only one that I was able to identify of all of them actually gave credit to the original composer. Musicians have borrowed from each other as well as from themselves. And within the music industry lately, you know, it's all about money, money, money. And it, it just feels like we're all working 
to feed into this machine. We're being left behind uh, mm -hmm. in a sense. And uh, at the same time with, uh, yeah, like I said before, with the last year, we've all been kind of, a lot of us have been, have been leveled at, with a few exceptions. It's, it's weird to start at the ground level again. Right on. Yeah. Any final thoughts, Jennifer? Yeah, I agree. I, I'll never forget this one time um, I was doing a gig and it was kind of, I, I don't even think I was getting paid. I think it was like a, like a charity type thing or something. And this lady comes up to me and goes, uh, hey, do you have the copyrights to play these songs? I was just like, I'm not even getting paid. <laughs> it was so crazy. I, it's just like, like, so even, you know, not online, it's like people just. <laughs> oh, it, it's if you look at the inside of like, uh, for example, a Hal Leonard um, instruction book that comes with like a CD with accompaniment tracks mm -hmm. for whatever. If you read the fine print, it actually includes public performance as excluded. It actually yeah. says it right on there, and you're like, even for free, <laughs> yeah, public. If it's public, it's forbidden. So crazy. The, and I ended up showing her actually because uh, musicnotes.com, you, you pay them for the copyrights also. And they actually have something on, on their music that says this person has permission to play this song in public. So that was pretty cool. So I, I, I ended up showing her that. I'm like, see? <laughs> like, well, venues that? are supposed to have their own, you know, subscriptions to the performing mm -hmm. rights organizations. Mm -hmm. So you as a performer shouldn't have to get a, a release for everything that you play. You're playing yeah. a you know, that's already been taken care of. They paid for it. Yep. But see, as, as the is... economy transforms, they're uh, they're sending the yeah. costs down the down the line, right? Like I did a video where I was talking about the touring industry and how the touring companies always paid for the touring insurance for the artists, but now they're like, okay, well after COVID, if you want to go back on tour, now you have to foot that cost. That was Tens part of the of whole thing was that you know why would why would I even sign up with you as my touring company if you're not going <laughs> to if you're not going to cover my insurance for the for the what? I'll just do it my damn self and keep all the money. What am I paying you for? for you know? Especially for a solo artist. Um, I mean, if you have to foot that bill by yourself. Yeah. No, I couldn't even imagine doing something like that by myself. I really want to thank you guys uh, for being here with me today. Thank you to everybody who's been watching. Please make sure you mash that like button and uh, share this out so that way people can see it. And um, let's let's give a lot of exposure to Marina from the Piano Keys here. Go over. Her link's already in the description. Go over to her channel and subscribe. Help the good fight, right? Classical music rocks, and we love it, and so we want to support. Also, more classical music, Jennifer Valaket. Go over to Jennifer Valaket, Jennifer's music page, and subscribe, and you can listen to some of her performances. And, of course, Evelyn Holland, also a musician, singer, and guitarist. You know I'm not making that much that much money on YouTube. We were just talking about all this. So go to patreon.com slash Matthew's Music Lesson Studio. Sign up to support the channel, please, and thank you. And you can go to Matthew's Music Lesson Studio.com for your music lessons. If you want piano lessons, go to the pianokeys.com. I don't do piano lessons. I do guitar and voice and all that stuff. So you can check us out for your music lessons. If you go to my page, you get to record the lessons. So that means you get to keep them on your computer forever and review them forever for free. And that's just cool like that. So everybody, thank you for watching Mastering Music with Matthew. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Eve, I'll see you all next time on Mastering Music with Matthew.